Lately, it's really felt like thin and light laptop manufacturers have been getting so close to creating the perfect laptop. Like Microsoft Surface Laptop, for example. It's sexy, the screen is great, and the keyboard is amazing. But the I.O. is hot garbage. The Dell XPS 13, it's got top tier build quality, solid I.O., and is really quick. But the screen options and the webcam placement in particular are mediocre. <sighs> All right, so what about the OG thin and light laptop king? Apple. To find out, Alex, who writes our laptop reviews these days, completely switched to Apple products, giving up his Pixel 2 and Surface laptop for the iPhone XS and MacBook Air, which has finally been updated for 2018. Memory Express's Victoria, BC location is now open, and this new store offers all the same product selection and quality of service as their others. Check out the link below to learn more. First impressions last a lifetime, and first impressions of the MacBook Air are that, well, it's probably gonna have a long lifetime. This is a damn well-built machine. The aluminum chassis is easily among the stiffest on the market. There's virtually no screen flex whatsoever, and although it is thin, it's kind of denser than you might expect, weighing just under three pounds. Compared to the last version of the Air, which by the way debuted in 2013, the reduction of the bezels and the way that the glossy black extends right to the edge really ups the sex appeal of this year's model, and you wouldn't feel weird taking it out of your backpack no matter what the setting. Just make sure that while you're putting it in your backpack, you remember your dongles. Now to be clear, I'm not too torn up about the I.O. These are both Thunderbolt 3 ports with compatibility for displays, docks, external GPUs, any USB device you could want, including charging the MacBook Air itself. So I would take these over a Type A and a mini display port any day of the week. Microsoft. Now let's get back to the screen. It's more than just glossier. It addresses every problem with the old MacBook Air design, increasing the resolution to 2560 by 1600. That's a taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio for those keeping score at home. And they also increased the color gamut, making it among the best laptop displays available with an asterisk. I don't expect this to make any difference. In fact, I suspect that Apple gives exactly zero Fs what I think, but I'm once again disappointed that they refuse to include touchscreen support in their Mac OS and on their laptops. At least the touchpad is awesome though. And Boy, is it ever awesome. Like, I know we always go on about how great Apple's touchpads are, but suck it up, PC fanboys. We do it because they are. There are a bunch of gestures, actually, that have been available on Windows for a long time, but I've just never used them because they don't feel right. By contrast, after only a couple hours on macOS, they just become part of the natural flow of using the machine. They are so well thought out. And like, look how big it is. Also, how close it is to the keyboard, which makes it really easy to thumb operate while you're typing. Also supernatural, the fingerprint sensor in the power button. There is one place that a fingerprint sensor is better than Face ID, and this is it, Apple nailed it. Like, I'm always logged in at the same time the screen turns on after opening this guy up. Touch ID is so well implemented here that frankly, it feels almost as natural as Windows Hello facial recognition on the Surface laptop. Unfortunately, there is one area where the MacBook Air can't get close to the Surface laptop, the keyboard. Now I don't personally miss the touch bar, so I'm not gonna dock any marks there, but these short throw and potentially short life key switches are just not a great time to type on for extended periods. Like after a while, I actually can get mostly used to them, really similar to the MacBook Pro. And credit where credit is due, they are really easy to type on in awkward situations, like if you're walking around like holding your laptop clickety-clacking on it, since you don't have to apply a lot of force. And that short throw does make staying steady easier. But I still find myself missing more strokes than usual and have a hard time feeling where each key ends. And making matters worse is the lack of a delete key. I mean, okay, well backspace, 
says delete, but it, it just goes back because it's a Mac. And I know you can do function delete, but man, I miss my dedicated delete key almost as much as my touchscreen when I go to a Mac. The part that gets me the most though, is that Apple had fantastic laptop keyboards, arguably the best in the game. And then now they felt the need to take what is in my mind, a step back. Now, let's take a step back and talk about one of the things that Apple people are always shouting about. How was Mac OS and the iPhone and the integration that comes along with them? In short, okay. The lack of Windows Snap Assist in Mac OS is really annoying. Uh, one time in particular, I had a video conference that, and I had to take notes and ended up missing two slides, just trying to get all the darn windows to each take up like exactly half of the screen in a way that's aesthetically pleasing. It's funny because I'd always see people on MacBooks with their windows just kind of strewn all over the place, like papers on a desk. And I just assumed they were bad at computers, but it turns out that once you get over about four applications open, it can be really difficult to keep things organized and frankly, isn't worth the effort. With that said, iMessage, when we weren't running into some kind of random bugs, is really nice to have on the desktop. It's just that as a non-Mac person, like if you've made it this long without iMessage and FaceTime for that matter, I don't really feel like it adds a ton of value. All of my friends use WhatsApp, Hangouts, Facebook Messenger, or WeChat. Like I've gotten maybe 30 to 50 messages via SMS this entire calendar year. And frankly, the disappointing webcam on the MacBook Air made for a very mediocre FaceTime experience as well. Overall, the best thing about Mac OS is that everything just seems to work with no babysitting required. Spotlight Search can't find the camera with any of the obvious keywords, but is otherwise awesome. And if you reboot, it plunks you right down where you left off. You don't need to make sure it's not updating in the background, sucking up your battery when you unplug, all that sort of thing. Like I know a lot of people in my life that could benefit from Mac OS simply because it's better at crap management than Windows. Like I've seen people on Windows machines that are shockingly slow, not because the hardware is bad, but because of a bunch of junkware and kind of putting everything in the wrong spot where it's hard to find it. Whereas with Mac OS, although you don't get the same degree of control, it is harder to totally mangle it. So overall, if what you plan on doing is mostly productivity and internet based, Mac OS is just pretty darn great. The dynamic light and dark themes and surprisingly snappy experience given the low power processor stand out, but then also bring me really nicely to what doesn't stand out about the MacBook Air 2018. It is only available with a dual core CPU when four cores has been the standard in Ultrabooks for the last year or so. Like it handled a simple model in Fusion 360, but it's at a significant disadvantage compared to competitors like the Surface Laptop 2, Dell XPS, and Lenovo X1 Carbon when it comes to multitasking and multi-threaded workloads. The good news is that the dual core low power chip can be basically silently cooled, even in such a thin device. And it unsurprisingly yields great battery life with this thing lasting a good 10 hours while doing work like editing this script. But is it worth the asking price? Well, that's another question. Our model here cost an eye-watering $2,600 for an Ultrabook. Mind you, it has 16 gigs of RAM and a 1.5 terabyte SSD, but even our bang for the buck recommended config comes in at $1,400. That's a lot. But Apple kind of sets the bar for the premium thin and light market and with other manufacturers creeping their pricing up over the last few years, honestly, it's, it's actually not that far out there anymore. So bottom line, with most of the laptops that come through our lab, we complete the review, then pawn it off to the next new employee who needs a computer. The MacBook Air 2018, not that kind of beast. And it even hangs with the Surface Laptop 2 and XPS 13, assuming you're okay with the keyboard. And bear in mind, of course, that this is coming from a PC guy. D.
dbrand is your source for awesome textured vinyl skins. They're available for laptops, phones, tablets, controllers, control consoles, controllers, and more. They're made from high quality 3M vinyl and their patented adhesive is guaranteed to leave no residue on your device if you want to change the skin. Their uncompromising precision in cutting the vinyl ensures a factory fit for your device and they not only look great, but they also protect against incidental damage and scratches. Their customer service robots are easy to work with and absolutely fantastic and their products are affordable and ship worldwide. Go try out their configurator today. We're going to have that linked in the video description to see what your life would look like with just a touch of deep end in it. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.